Well, here's the next one. That was on Psychopathia's channel. Don't worry, I'm almost out of water. There were other people up there, you know, the usual guys that go on the, his uh, channel, on Q Butter's channel. Q Butter was up there as well. Uh, about Kamala Harris and who's black, who's not. Of course, they have a warped sense of race and a which mirrors the current operation of the powers that be. Which is to call everybody but us uh, uh, white. And the coon agents help it. Now, Q Butter, later on, he said something to the effect that uh, everybody else is different from us, but if we, if black Americans get with Jamaicans, uh, you come in with a, to a familiar culture. And I said, hell no. See, that's that hijacking. Now, if you didn't know Q Butter's Jamaican, now people, uh, he has a Jamaican features for those who are familiar with them because apparently a lot of black people either playing stupid or just don't know. He, he has Jamaican features and I can easily see that. Plus, he's from Brooklyn. So, and only Jamaicans keep trying to force themselves on us and say that they are one of us and we're the same people. When he has his Xanax Institute uh, commercial, you can see the kids are clearly Caribbean. That's not us. They're not like us. <laughs> but only that's why, again, my, my argument years and years ago, before anybody else picked this shit up because they were all in with that pan-African mindset, even if, even if they didn't call themselves a pan-Africanist. They just felt that we're all black, we're all the same people. What's the problem? And people like me, we've been highlighting what the problem was. But see, Jamaicans right now, they're taking the time to let the Africans take the heat and then try to backstab the Africans while trying to act like uh, they're down with us. But looking in the UK, which I have been doing, and, you know, the Africans aren't cool with the Jamaicans either because the Jamaicans like raising hell and everybody else's name but their own. You know, it's like they want to tell other black people how to behave when they don't know how to behave. But when they get around white people and others, they're the ones cooning up. They're not killing, they're cooning. I mean... This has been happening all my life. I've been noticing this shit. And I have interacted with many different, I don't want to say races the Jamaican, but that's why when you find Indian and African style Jamaicans, they really look alike. I mean, they don't look mixed except for the hair. But as we all say, we got all types of hair textures, but not naturally. I, I don't think so. Uh, now I've dated Africans and Africans and Caribbeans always saw each other as the same people, but neither one of them saw us as the same people because their foods are similar. And I know some of you going to say, of course they are. That's not my argument. The point is they have finger type foods and eating animal heads and shit we don't even eat. So I don't know what Q Butter is talking about that we're going to have a culture, a familiar culture. Watch that guy Sonny when he went to Jamaica looking at the Jamaican foods and you'll see why those Jamaican foods don't make it to the United States. Because nobody in their right mind going to eat none of that shit. So... Again, I always ask the question, why did Jamaicans keep attaching themselves, forcing themselves on us? Really? They don't do it to anybody else. And that's why I am going to continue to ask them all. Why don't you harass the Puerto Rican, the Dominican and the Cuban? But maybe I got a pseudo answer 
when I was in that discussion because Q Butter from Brooklyn had the nerve to get up there and say that Selena was white. He said that Jennifer Lopez was white. He says that Puerto Ricans are white. I'm like, am I in the twilight zone? That's how I feel like I am in 2024. Because it now appears as if everybody is white. But us. In fact, I was watching a video today, which is Sunday. This might go up on Sunday. You know, sometimes how, how it could be, but. There's a video called one of those compilations where somebody put together police encounters end up fatal or something to that effect. This could have been part three or something. I don't know. But they approached a guy at the mall. He uh, had weed on him. And he was talking to some young girls and he asked what their ages were. So a cop confronts him. And says, uh, you know, don't you think that's kind of creepy to ask what the ages are trying to talk to young girls? Then he's saying something to the effect. That's why I asked what the ages were. After that, that should be ended discussion. Truth, truth be told, because if he did ask their ages, that means he, you know, wasn't trying to necessarily harm. He's like, well, I could tell how old they were. Well, you could, but maybe he couldn't. So that's why he asked. But anyway, that's beside the point. Point is, this guy was darker than me. Looked like he was a uh, half black, half Mexican. Very clearly dark brown skin. And his hair looks slightly waved. He looked like he was black and Mexican. Bottom line is he started running after a while. And then the cop said, I'm chasing a white male Hispanic. I said, white male Hispanic. I said, the guy is probably twice my complexion. And for those who've seen my arms, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, what the fuck is going on today? Now, that can confuse a whole lot of people. If I'm a cop and they say I'm chasing a white male Hispanic, I'm expecting somebody looking like Pitbull. That's what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting somebody dark as a motherfucker. I don't know what's up with that. In another video I saw, and I, I, I think that was Wisconsin or somewhere. Last drop of water. Uh, the cop was chasing a guy. And then he said, send me another unit. I'm after a black male. And you may have seen that video, may not have. But I'm like, black male? That motherfucker looked clearly white. And everybody, everybody in the comment section is like, God damn, he looks like a white dude. Only once he took his hat off, he had a, a type of Afro type hair, but it was still flowing down. But his skin tone and facial features qualify as white. Some people are saying he's probably mixed. So that's what people are trying to do. I told people years ago this was going to happen. But I said it was going to happen with the Hispanics because it was happening. Uh, that mixed people are going to, the white people are going to start throwing them into the white category. Helps marginalize others and uh, especially black people. And it keeps their numbers up. But again, historically, that's what they've been trying to see. These hood scholars, they like to confuse because their job is to brainwash people. That's why they stay on and people like me, we get handicapped, you know? So that's why I'm looking right now. The stuff is still going on Rumble. You know, we'll see how open they are. So far, so good. Uh, <clears throat> so... That was the discussion about race, the usual discussion. 
whether or not Kamala Harris is black or not. And I always assert what I've been asserting for the longest time. And obviously when they ask you for evidence, they act like they can't understand. And a lot of them can't because they're hood intellectuals. So you know how they are. They're emotional. Uh, they look at sources that uh, support whatever it is that they thought about. And they don't even understand what it is that they're reading, but they want to pretend that they understand what they're reading. And they want, you know, as usual, they all always want to be geneticists, historians, scientists of all types, physicists, all types of shit. And they act like if you don't agree with them, then that means you're dumb and you don't understand. But they're not smart enough to interpret what they're reading. Like one guy, Domo, came up talking about black genes are dominant. He act like he was saying a re revelation when we've been hearing that from Pan-African, uh, Afrocentric uh, type people for years. The so-called master teachers. We've been hearing that for years, which was a, a way to, you know, give some inspiration to black people. To try to get you to love yourself. But as soon as they, they let loose the white women on you, that's how you could tell black people's true state of mind. Got to get me a white woman. Want the white babies. I keep seeing black guys walking around with white kids and loving them to death. And it's crazy. You see a black man walking around with daughters with blonde hair and shit. Flowing blonde hair and shit. This shit is crazy. But it just goes to show... That black people don't like being black. So. The bottom line with all this shit. Is that. These discussions are meant to. Marginalize us. And then you know some people always got to bring up that black people are. One third are white. Well if that's the case how come we're not treated as white. And if mixed people are not black and we're supposed to be one third white, then that means we're mixed and we shouldn't be black then, right? You see the logic? You got people from the hood coming up with their own schemes to say, this is what qualifies as black and this is what doesn't. They say the one drop rule is misguided, which it is, but that was desperation on the white man. Now, apparently... You can have no drops of white and be white or classified as white on paper anyway. But why are these people calling people white Hispanics? A lot of Hispanics might be shocked to see that they are called white on paper and, and not all of them. Uh, it's usually the Mexican type or the white Cuban types. But usually they'll be called Hispanic. So. They'll take it, of course, like Iranians will be called white. Arabs be, will be called white. People from certain countries, Brazil, they'll be called white. They'll take it. And some of these people lie or I say lie because if they know so much and talk about so much. Then they say East Indians are classified as white. Maybe in Jamaica, but not in the United States. See, I made a video years ago. And people didn't watch it too, too much. And those who did thought that what I was talking about was dumb. And that's, that includes people who normally watch my videos. I didn't get mad because they disagreed. I just said, hey, that's my analysis. Take it or leave it. Now, it looks like my analysis is correct because I said that when you look at the racial dynamics and marginalization, you see, especially in the suburbs, people well off. You see... 
them with straight hair. Doesn't matter if they're mixed or not. But if their hair is soft, nearly straight, or straight, they seem to be put into a white category where we get marginalized. And when I say we, that does not include the African. And that does not include Caribbeans. Because Africans and Caribbean they have peasy heads, but they'll still be in the suburbs. That's why you see, whenever you hear blacks saying that they're black and they're in the suburbs, it's usually a Caribbean. Nine times out of ten, it's a Caribbean. And if they're dating white women, and getting mad because white women either won't date them or broke up with them or they killed them. It's the Caribbean who's mad because they can't get their beloved white woman. That's, that's what the fuck it is. Or an African. But you know the Africans, they'll have their names. So when other black people want to go along with this everybody's white shit. But us. If they ain't like us which is a corny song in my opinion, but everybody's quoting it. And I think the reason why it's being quoted is because, you know, the agents are ordered to promote it like that because a Drake Kendrick Lamar so-called rap battle, you know, I don't even know the significance of such a uh, shit, except that they're attempting to have fake beefs to emulate the nineties, because I don't know if you noticed, but, Seems as if the powers that be have financed a lot of the rappers from the 90s to make comebacks because so many of them are coming out <laughs> with new material. LL Cool J, Rakim, Greg Nice, even Slick Rick, Busta Rhymes, all, KRS One, all these people. And somebody else I just saw the other day, I was like, come on, what's going on? Maybe they need them to save rap. I don't know. But they just keep coming back all at once. You got to keep in mind, a lot of these guys are pushing 60. If they still got something to say, fine. LL Cool J's material sounds good because he kind of keeps up to date with his shit. But these other guys, you know, and Greg Nice shit sound actually all right. Uh, but these other guys, Slick Rick, really sounds bad. Oh yeah, Big Daddy Kane too. But it's like they want the 90s to come back for some strange reason. Maybe because the people from the 90s are in control now. I don't know. But I'm not talking about the rap. I'm talking about society. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of crazy Cause I feel like I'm in the twilight zone growing up. A Hispanic was never white only from watching cops. No, the first 48, when you see those Mexican, no, not Mexicans, Cubans in Miami. And you see that some of them do look white. Some of them look mostly white, but still got some traces of some black in them. Others look in between, you know, like, uh, Straight hair, that's dark, Andy Garcia types. That's another thing, too. They also brought up a picture of Spaniard types. All of them looking different. They want to tell me that because they're from Spain, they're white. I said, damn, you know you're not talking to a five-year-old. Talking to a man who actually did research. So, Psychopathes did his same old tricks that he does. He said, uh, oh, we ain't got time for looking shit today. <clears throat> We ain't going to play that game. I wasn't even about to play that game as he calls it a game. I don't know how it's a game if it's real. So then he tells me to pull up pictures on my <clears throat> computer. And then once I did, I kept showing a whole lot. Then he cut I didn't realize he cut it off. I assumed that he had, but just in case he didn't, I kept pulling up a whole bunch of other pictures. But he, and he cut it off. Then he goes and does his own lookership. And you know people who know the deal. Know that his lookership is always biased and like North Africa. Every time you bring up North Africans, he always wants to show some white Berbers or some mixed ones. Uh, 
I bring them up, I want to point out the black ones. So he did a pretty decent presentation on Howard, even though that wasn't really his uh, research. To show that Boule is supporting white supremacy in white biology. And they're having white people with the one drops that come in and take over blackness and try to guide black people. And then I had to point out that the Nation of Islam and the Morris Science Temple love whiteness too. Nation of Islam with their white God, their leaders are only white or light skin. And when the only time you had a Nation of Islam leader that was dark was when Clarence 13X had to break away and form his own crew. It's the only way that can happen. And I pointed out that the Moors, they don't like calling white people white and black people black. Like Taharqa Bay. That's why Taharqa Bay went out of his way to say that more does not mean black. Not because it doesn't mean black, but because he, the, the, his group, they don't like calling black people black because they support white supremacy. So that's why they have to say that more does not mean black. Because if you say that you're the Morris Science Temple, that means you're saying you're the Black Science Temple. So that's why he had to lie about that. And that's why every time he says he would debate somebody on something, he always has to set it up, train, and email them all that. Fuck all that email bullshit. When it's live, the show is live, let's do it right now. If you know what you're talking about and the other person doesn't know what they're talking about according to you, then it should be easy victory. There's no need to go train. There's no need to do all this other shit. But that's how you know they're lying because every time he said he wanted to debate somebody, I've never seen a debate. But those of us who are down with him from behind the scenes, we know how he is. So <laughs> that's why you'll never see anything. But you know, these others keep talking about Kamala Harris is not black. But yet, Hispanics are white. They're, ne they're not calling Kamala white. But they're calling her not black. But I make the argument that her mother is blacker than her father. I make the argument that Kamala Harris, biologically, is whiter than excuse me, is blacker than Michi X. They hate when I bring Michi X up all the time, but you can't deny what I'm saying. Case in point, put Michi X's white parent up against Kamala Harris's Indian parent and tell me which one is white. Biologically, not socially. That's the other thing they were talking about, race is a social construct. Yeah, in labels and in grouping, it is. But race is also reality as well. Also, back to the earlier point when the guy said that uh, black genes are dominant. Then we pointed out Patrick Mahomes' children. They The genes weren't dominant then. Then that's when he said, well, Patrick Mahomes is 75% white. You said black genes were dominant. Now, if they hadn't cut me off, I could have made a point, which I ain't going to make today. I'll save that for another time. But see, if they were being honest, they could have made a point that I was going to make. But see, these people don't really know race. They just know how to talk about it. See me, I get deep into it. I, I know I could recognize what's in somebody by looking at them. I told them in Kamala Harris's father, I could see some Mongol, Asian, Chinese type shit in them. I'm assuming it's Chinese because it's Jamaica. Even East Indians have some Mongol Asian in them. And then I show other pictures where East Indians had what they would call African facial features. You know how I do. And they said, you know how Psychopathias does. That ain't the hair. That ain't no uh, African uh, feature. I said, I ain't saying nothing about the hair. That's how they do. 
after a while, I said, let me get out of here because I'm tired of this shit. Uh, it's the same old shit. Coon agents getting paid off to mislead black people, miseducate black people. It's sad, but that, you know, it is what it is and it is what's happening. So, okay, so Indians could be any color, excuse me, Indians could be any color. Black people, as some of you, some of them say, come in all colors, but so do East Indians. And the colors include black. Now, these people keep acting like they know Indian culture, but I know they don't. Because Indians have some of the most mysterious culture. It's like they're well-known people, but people really don't know about them like that. They don't know their culture. They damn sure they don't know their languages. It's weird, but that's the way it is. It's like you see the people, but you don't really know them. And then you got people who think that they know Arabs, but they don't even know who the real Arabs are or were. But it's because a lot of people convert to Islam or fake Islam too. So they think that they should have something in common with the Arabs. But this trend of calling everybody else white very disturbing. Like I said, right now, it seems more and more like people are trying to isolate us from everybody else, which kind of relates to white racists always saying that we're the ones who are not human, subhuman. The world would be better without us. I keep hearing that talk from racists on the videos. So when I keep hearing that kind of stuff, that makes me think, what's going on? And even on the conservative radio, when they talk about Kamala Harris, they were saying that she's anti-Israel, anti-Jew. But they didn't talk about her husband and how her last name should be Imhoff. But why isn't it? See, I mean, they must really think people are stupid. But in that case, the conservative radio, they're directed towards the supposedly highly intelligent super patriotic even if they're from foreign extraction uh, brilliant people but they always brainwash them with stupid shit fuck she gonna be anti-Israeli and anti-Jewish when she's married to a Jew and the only reason why she's in the uh, White House or about to be is because of the Jew get the fuck out of here with this bullshit Man, I tell you, I don't know how long it's going to take before they do what they do. Shit, it could take them another 10 years, but it looks like they're trying to move fast. Uh, But I kind of hate to be, I don't want to say the current generation, but the generation after the, uh, after the current one. I hate to be them. But and throughout throughout history, somebody had to be in war. I was looking at some thing from Rome, and they had a uh, in memoriam, in memoria of uh, a guy. I guess he had to fight some lions in the in the uh, ring. I said, "Damn!" I, I was thinking about that shit. I was like, "Man, those are some savage times." You think about that shit, motherfuckers throwing you into a stage to fight lions for entertainment. Whether you did something or not. And you know you're going to die. <laughs> Shit. Shit is crazy. The only good part is at least lions, they like to kill you kind of quickly. But I said, damn. Shit is crazy. In the grand scheme of things, Rome wasn't that long ago. And boxing is kind of like that gladiator shit. Boxing, MMA, anything where people get hurt and blood is drawn. I was watching that Crawford fight, which was boring. 
you know, and they say people like the action. You know, people like seeing people get knocked out on their feet because every time people get knocked out, it's like, woo, yeah, oh, yeah. That's what they like. Same thing on the street. A lot of people like to pretend that they're not savage-minded, but I'm sure we've all seen, been in school where we've seen the presumed geek when it comes to somebody getting into a fight, they can't wait to see blood. Get him. Get her. In fact, you know what? I've been analyzing shit. Watch somebody else take these philosophies. These are my personal observations. And you know you never heard nobody say this shit before. I should save it, but I'll say it now. Because I, I keep noticing people keep stealing shit. Because, hey, again, what you you could tell when I researched it. That's when I said I looked into, I read, I saw. A lot of times I'll quote it if I can remember the exact source. But I'll say I read, I saw, or I remember reading about. Other times, when I tell you about something that's from my personal observation in real life, my personal experiences. So that's why I know when people repeat those, they got them from me because that's my personal experiences. And it's because I didn't hear them talking about shit before I said it. But it is what it is. So <clears throat> I was watching some, you know, I watch these animal videos. I see more and more with the censorship ship on YouTube. They don't even show animals eating, killing and eating anymore. It's rare to find now. That's crazy. When I was a kid growing up watching those shows, I used to say, damn, why are they showing this type of shit? That's the reality of the world. You don't realize that shit. So you, it's good to see because it lets you know that, you know, that's the reality of the world. So anyway, I was watching this upload by, <clears throat> I guess it's the latest one by National Geographic. And they were showing these ants. And they said, these ants, they go and harvest the seeds. Bring them back to the colony. And they say on a controlled environment and a road that they must, they're directed to travel on. Then they have guards guiding them and making sure that they keep doing their thing. And they have other ants that clean up. And I said, then they get their orders, working orders. They got a system. They got a civilization, you could say. And then a turtle, a tortoise came and they tried to attack the tortoise. Obviously, they couldn't win on that. But for the most part, when intruders come along, they go in and they, they, they take care of them. And then that combined with other animals like birds. I don't know why these bird feeding videos keep coming on to my feeds, but they are kind of interesting to see. Because it's crazy when you see baby birds, they're helpless, ugly. They can't take care of themselves. The birds don't have nipples uh, to feed birds from. So the bird parents, they got to go out and capture all types of shit. It's crazy to see them capturing insects, uh, lizards, other birds, mice. Especially when they get bigger and then the birds got to swallow them whole. And then, you know, some birds eat two lizards and shit. Lizards be bigger than their body. I'm like, man, how the fuck do they swallow this shit without choking or dying? And then I realized what it was because they, because I said, then they must have a very fast metabolism or something. But they do have two stomachs. They say one is for, uh, for the bones, others for the flesh. So the flesh gets absorbed as, you know, the nutrients that they need and the bones get pulverized and smashed into a mush. That's it. That's why owls and the fur does too and feathers and shit. They said that's why owls will cough up the bones and the uh, feathers. I said, that shit is crazy. So that's why birds can eat all the, these shits whole. <laughs> I mean, you see some birds, it's crazy. Though. When you see birds, when they're bigger, they uh, 
pick at the meat, pick it apart. And some birds they'll pick. It's crazy. The bigger birds will pick the pick apart whatever they caught and feed it to the uh, babies piece by piece. But the smaller birds, they just grab something whole and give it to them whole. This shit is crazy. But my whole point was when you see these birds, they got to go grab another living thing, you know, a roach or whatever insect can be crawling around, minding its own business. And then a bird comes and snatches it up. And now you're in the mouth of their baby. It's a weird circle of life that the earth has been that put that put us here. And it made me realize something. Because I said, then these birds are always at danger. And then you, they got to worry about other things, other birds and other animals coming to eat the eggs or to eat the babies while they're young. Hell, even to eat the adults if they can. Because birds like crows, herons, seagulls and all that kind of stuff. I'm like. I didn't know until watching the videos that they ate other birds, number one, <laughs> pigeons and whatever the hell else is flying around and rats and gophers and fish, all, all types of shit. I didn't know that. But one day I was in a parking lot and I did see some crows chasing some some of those smaller birds. I don't even know what those birds are called. You know, those common birds that you see on the ground, they're kind of grayish, brownish. I saw them chasing them. See, now I said, now I see that they were trying to eat them. I said, that shit is crazy. So what it let me, led me to believe is when you look at humans, you look at ants, you look at whatever. We got armies and militaries that's constantly killing each other, trying to blow the hell up uh, out of each other. And then when it's not military, it's crazed maniacs on a, a more local level, serial killers, drug dealers, crazy people who were just, you know, the, the, the demons made them do it and all that kind of shit. And it made me realize, you know what? Even though we're not getting eaten, even though that, that that's a danger too by some animals, but you got humans that attack humans on a regular basis with the intention to kill. So we're under constant attack too, just like these animals are. Every time you turn around, they can get eaten. And, and then down to the insect world, then you got other insects, praying mantises that go around and, you know, find other insects and eat them up. They'll eat mice, spiders, all types of shit. So no, it, it's like everything that's living is in a state of perpetual war. It's almost like that survival of the fittest is true. Now we can get into the philosophical thing about God and all that kind of stuff. Cause the man said God is love, but God made the earth and everybody, everything on it is in perpetual war. That's why you see when you watch those animal, uh, uh, documentaries, that's all you see. Each group of whatever animals, they got to fight each other. And then they got to fight outside threats who don't like them or just want to pick on them and say, hey, don't come around this way. Stay where you at. All that type of shit. That type of thing <clears throat> is perpetual war. And of course, with peoples, different peoples, different ideologies, all that kind of shit. So we're always in danger when we go outside. We're looking at predators. Aris. Rapists, I'll say. Fuck all that. Rapists. Serial killers. People looking to knock you over the head to, to rob you. People who you were in a relationship with. Now they want to kill you. Anything. Police officers, they could be racist. Uh, and a lot of them serial killers because uh, more of my eye, I was just watching a video about a cop who uh, was messing with young girls, getting them pregnant. Then had a wife, 
she found out, so he killed her in front of the son. Stabbed the girl he had the affair with and had her pregnant. She had a baby. Then he was trying to make it to the Mexican border from Oregon. I'm like, it's a hell of a drive, but he was a form, he was a cop. Able to get jobs in schools and, you know, so he can do his predatory thing. So he killed everybody and then finally killed himself when, you know, he couldn't escape. So you got predators out there, people who are preying on your children. Just like you got birds. I was watching one video on a bird. I think it was a heron or one of those or, or a stork. It was a stork. The stork mother was evaluating the babies and made the determination that four of them are cool. I guess they evaluate them based on how they fight for food. Because if you watch them eat, they don't give a fuck about the next one, except when it's time to huddle together. But when they fight for food, there's always some greedy one who wants every goddamn thing. And then there's always that one who hardly eats and is shy and is like, oh, man, can you please just give me something? And he doesn't realize you got to fight for it. So... The mother says, okay, this is the weak one. Let's get rid of him. And then I can continue to feed the others because they'll be able to take care of themselves when it's time. That type of thing happens. And nature is cruel, but that's the way it is. That's the way everybody, everything is programmed to work within this earth and on this earth. Now, why did it, do, do, do the creators make everybody or everything constantly kill each other. I don't know if that makes things exciting or if it makes uh, people or and other things get innovative and creative on ways to avoid that type of thing. I mean, you think about this in, on this planet. There's no way you can go on this planet where there's not the threat of death from another living thing. Going to a forest. You know, there's, there's a reason why they made all those uh, stories about for, uh, you know, something's in the forest uh, uh, at night <laughs> because there is something in the forest at night. Shit, bears, cats, owls, uh, eagles, snakes, skunks, all types of shit, deer, all types of shit. Um... You got them, you got, you can go into a cave. You never know what you might find. I don't know about these days, but definitely in prehistoric times, <laughs> you know, they had big ass cats that lived in caves. Bears that lived in caves. I don't know if they still live in caves now. I think some bears still live in caves now. You know, in 10 to 1, I, I think there are even some pigs that live in caves, too. But 10 to 1, if you go into a cave and there's a big cat or a bear living in the cave, 9 times out of 10, that means nothing else is going to be there, <laughs> you know? So, that's a danger to you. You go in the mountains. You got danger. You got cats that live in the mountains. There's some bears that live in the mountains. Then you got birds hunting every goddamn thing. You go underground. You got shit there too. What the fuck you looking at? Get out your car, worry about what you're doing. Yeah. Of course, you know you go underwater, not just the ocean, but goddamn it, you go on a lake. You go on a river, goddamn. Ain't no telling what the fuck is going on. We all seen that show. Uh, river monsters. I see you looking while you walking. I see your eyes moving. Look like a <clears throat> white guy with some. As Tarka Bay says, sugared up. They keep bringing these type of people all around. Look at me. Matter of fact, since I'm on that topic, I went to a motherfucking fast food restaurant. I ain't gonna say which one it is because I don't want nobody getting any clues and. 
all that kind of shit. But I went through the drive through. It was a different location than where I normally would go. Because they, the other one, they got these Mexicans working there. I can hardly understand what the fuck they're saying. I got got to constantly repeat myself and they lie. Because they, they either lazy. They're going to tell me uh, about a deal I couldn't get. Talking about uh, you, you got to get either two uh, biscuits or two uh, uh, muffins. It, it wasn't McDonald's, by the way. I say it was Wendy's. I said, you got to get, you can't mix. I said, man, the goddamn app says I can mix. She's like, no, no. I said, man, this is some bullshit. I just left. I said, I ain't got time to be arguing about this shit when the app clearly tell. I, I don't like ordering through the app on Wendy's because it's fucking tedious. And they won't let you pick your name. So I made a mistake and put the name of a particular email that I use. And I don't like the. You know, that's not the name I want to be known by. So then I went there another day because they had an offer free any size fries you with the one dollar purchase. Went there. Ladies talking about another Mexican can't understand the word. She said, I don't know why they put people with poor English at the drive through. I can't understand that shit, but maybe they're just trying to let us know that these people are here. So she's like, they don't we don't take cards. I said, what do you mean you don't take cards? The machine's down. I said, man, this sounds like some bullshit. And I realized, you know what? I think it's because what I ordered, they knew that I was just going to be paying a dollar. And they didn't want to take cards. So that's why they wanted cash. See, this is how they do shit. They, they run shit the way they want to run it from their third world perspective. So everything gets fucked up. Anyway, went to a different location. I see... A white man, red hair. I'm like, at first, I'm like, man, damn, what the fuck? They take it so fucking long for. Then I see them chatting at the window with a guy in the, the vehicle ahead of me. I had my windows rolled up. I said, let me roll this shit down because the motherfucker got handed his food, uh, uh, his, his receipt. So he should be moving. That's what I'm thinking. So the guy at the window. The Wendy's guys like, uh, yeah, you were looking good. You looking good too, and all that kind of stuff. Seems like the other guys responding. I don't, I don't know if they exchanged numbers or what, but I said, damn. I said, I hope he don't think I look good when I come up here. <laughs> so, white guy, he reminded me of Boy George when he had the short haircut. Uh, so he kind of looked at me. I'm looking at him just like, man, I'm, only thing I'm concerned about is, is the goddamn food. I ain't worried about nothing else. That's, that's the that's the look I was giving him. But trying not to be too mean, but he looked like he was trying to be mean because he was trying to act like he may not like my kind. Shit, he, does, he had nails on and shit. These, these fast food restaurants be putting these weirdos at the drive-thru. Again, it's all a part of a, a plot to make you see it. They're making all these people visible like the female... Uh, chief of police's uh, secret security uh, leaders, all this kind of shit. Kamala Harris, Marvel, it's all designed to make you see these things. But that's why I asked for us to look at us and see what we see of us out there. Megan the Stallion, Cardi B, Coons galore, Uncle Tom's galore. Criminals, uh, people done wrong by white people, victims that is, people say they're tired of the victimhood mentality, victimhood mindset, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. Shit, if you got your ass kicked, are you supposed to uh, not have a victimhood mentality or, or are you supposed to go back and kill the person? Is, is that what you want? I mean, it's fucking stupid how people repeat. That's how you can tell when people are brainwashed when they start repeating shit that they don't fully understand. So anyway, he grabs my card. First, he coughed hard. And I was thinking to myself, he I think he's doing that just to see how I react. Like, oh, shit. 
But luckily, he, he wasn't the one handing me the food. So then he just grabbed, sends the car. He didn't say a word to me. I'm glad he didn't. See, a lot of these people know who not to talk to. Because you do put, you can put your life at risk. So I grabbed the food, left. I said, damn. I, now, years ago, even 10 years ago, they used to do this. Like I said, I, the first time I saw one was at a Taco Bell in Maryland about 10 years or so ago. Mexican cross dresser. And then there was another one at Arby's. I said, this shit is crazy. Now, I got back to the manager. I called him at the Arby's and told him, man, come on. He's like, I know, I know, but they, they told me to do it. <laughs> See, that's how you get the confirmation. That is done on purpose. Even if you, you didn't get confirmation, you know it's done on purpose because it's happening. Businesses, they don't normally want to be represented in that way. Because I always ask myself the question, well, how did they get the job? Did they get the job dressed like this? Are they trying to pressure people to say, hey, if you didn't hire me, that means you're discriminating. Well, obviously, if you don't hire everybody who applies for the job, it's discrimination. You want to get technical about it. So, you know, it is what it is on that. Uh, but the world is, is, is in perpetual war. Everything that's living is in per perpetual war and in fear for their safety at all times. Now, as I was thinking about the ants and human beings and lions and wild dogs, as you see, some animals know how to form groups to maximize their successes. Then you got some animals that like the leopard, the tiger, who are solitary. So they're only really working for themselves and they can't really, but you know, they're strong on their own, but they can't really dominate the scene. So you look at ants, that's the, there's a reason they call them army ants because you know, they, when there's a threat, they send the signal out, let's get them. And we don't stop until they're taken apart. <laughs> I saw one video where ants attacked the scorpion. I said, then the scorpion stinger is strong for big against bigger uh, animals. But then when the ants swarm on your ass and they, they're not stopping, they, they were finding the, the ligaments to tear them apart, which they found out and they cut them into pieces. I said, damn. So I kept thinking how black people are so disorganized when it comes to humanity each group, the ones that's more organized than the other, are going to be the more successful ones. That's common sense. Even gangs, the ones that are more better organized, are more successful. Sports teams, the ones that are better organized, are more successful. The ants are, no matter what type of ant, they're organized. They have a system that works. They have communication that works. And they're successful. That's why you will find, no matter what the living creature is on the planet, when they know when a whole bunch of ants are on the attack, you got to do something about it. <laughs> Termites, that's another one. They're highly organized and they're successful. So when it comes to human beings, white people are highly organized and they're successful. Asians are highly organized and they're successful. Black peoples are not. Indians are black. Some of them are highly organized, but they're also highly disorganized at the same time. You see those protests going on in Bangladesh. So you got other Negroes out here kind of trying to make sure that black people are never organized, but they keep trying to organize people for shit 
that is not real, not attainable, and is a waste of time. Like Pan-Africanism. Uh, even pro-black Afrocentricity, that type of shit, doesn't work. Masonry, uh, all the cuckoo uh, metaphysics and all that kind of bullshit. Metaphysics as fake. Just like metadata and computers. <laughs> it's not real data, but it's there. But see, that's more real than metaphysics, though. And that's just the way shit is, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, you got people trying to switch teams, but some groups may not want you. Some groups might accept you. But the bottom line is everybody and everything is in a state of perpetual war. And you have to be on guard. In our case, we have to be on guard mentally and against drugs, anything designed to kill or control. So, and globally, when it comes to the black group, this is what I try to explain to these people. Because you, you notice now these, they, these these people, they say, some people want you to believe that blacks were everywhere in the world. And then they talk about sub-Saharan Africa. Then when you ask them to describe this sub-Saharan African, they say, oh, you're playing games. There ain't no games being played. If you make the claim, you should be able to explain the claim. It's that simple. If you make a claim, explain it. They get mad because when I make a claim, I can explain it. They know they can't explain. That's why they pretend to get mad. And if you want to know that is another reason I started falling back from YouTube, aside from the censorship that I'm, I'm getting tired of. I, I don't even like watching videos where people got to watch what they say. I'm like, damn, shouldn't have to do that. But you know, it is what it is. And um, I'm pretty, you know, sick and tired of it. But for some odd reason, I didn't make any new videos or go live. But yet I do recognize that people being nosy. I do recognize that uh, you know, you got agents out here. So what I do is I just lay low started getting back into it because uh and I, I got the feeling but then i got disappointed again because i'm like it's the same old shit people talk the same shit and it's not based in reality it's based on white supremacy that's the bottom line